the aviation sector where uh, of course you have heard the announcement of the lifting of the ban and the operating license of Dana Air. Well yes we did go to town to get the views of uh, Nigerians about this. What do they think about it? Here's what we got. June 3rd, 2012, the ill-fated flight. While the search and recovery exercise was ongoing, Dana Airlines operating license came under the hammer. 98 days after, Dana is cleared to return to business. We, we carried out a rigorous um, technical audit of the airline and we've come to the conclusion that at this point in time it is safe to allow them to go back to the sky. For some, this decision is unfair and should not see the light of day. I strongly feel the returning of that license has been made political. That's what I feel. And uh, I don't think there's enough investigation that has been carried out on what actually happened on that fateful day, the 3rd of July. I don't think they should have been given back their licenses because some of the other airplanes that similar things happen to us not be given back their licenses. For example, Soso Lisa and all that. I would have expected that where, I mean, bodies have been set up to carry investigation. The question is this, are there reports? What are the reports? In what way can we say, you understand, that the very thing that led to the very crash vis-a-vis -vis the tragedies are not going to recall? I think for all intents and purposes, it's unfortunate the president is taking this very dimension. It is an assault again on the very cardinal essence of due process. For this representative from an aviation union, it's welcome. Yeah, the Accident Investigation Bureau carried out an investigation and a preliminary report uh, had been released. In summary, the, the report uh, did not find the aircraft type MD-83 uh, uh, unworthy to fly, not airworthy. The lines in Dana Airlines press statement signed by its chief executive officer, Jackie Atiromani, reads, The management and over 558 staff of Dana Air wish to express our deepest appreciation to the federal government of Nigeria over the lifting of the suspension of the airline's operations with effect from Wednesday, September 5, 2012, following government satisfaction with the airworthiness of the airline after a rigorous technical, operational and financial audit. As Dana Air returns to the skies, one question most Nigerians are asking is, will the airline be committed to pay all of the compensation due to relatives of those who lost their lives in the unfortunate accident? Bukola Joe Oketumbi, Channels Television News. Well, we're joined this morning by the Minister of Aviation, Stella Odoa from Abuja Studios. Morning and thank you for joining us. Well, some of the response we got from the report, which we just played now, is that of surprise. They were shocked about it to the extent that some of them actually think that this lifting of ban actually, in their words, came from the blues. And such, they questioned the integrity of that uh, process or the clearance, if I should say. What can you tell us concerning the reason why this happened and what people actually think about the lifting of that suspension? Well, um, first of all, uh, good morning to you. The, the issue of lifting um, Dana operational uh, permits, it's, it's actually something that shouldn't have happened in the first place. It, it's not um, it's not aviation practice. Aviation is a global sector and so there are laws, there are policies and there are procedures. Now coming to Dana's case for instance, we carried out very rigorous uh, audits, both technical, financial and um, administrative audits on their operations. Uh, and I think I should digress a bit by doing one or two clarifications. Dana operation has been lifted, meaning that they can operate. However, there are things that they must do. There are prerequisites uh, that they must fulfill before they actually go on the air. Number one, the certification, we must see it. And as you are aware, we said that uh, from the beginning that 
Boeing is working with us to certify all the aircraft that we have available. They must technically do the audit and then certify them to be airworthy. All this we are doing and we have gone very, very far. The panel we set for the technical and the administrative audit of Dana and all the airlines have completed their report. Uh, and in all that, Dana was not uh, indicted for any wrongdoing. However, we were doing uh, institutional reform prior to the accident that, that happened. And so strengthening NCAA to ensure that they do what they are supposed to do vis-a-vis uh, -vis fulfilling their regulatory obligations is being strengthened. Uh, if, if you look at NCAA law today, it's not what it used to be. NCAA has been strengthened and we keep on strengthening them because it's very, very important that the policies and the procedures set in place are being complied by. And so to answer your questions, we did not out of the blue ask Dana to go back um, to work. And like I said, Dana has some prerequisites that they must fulfill prior to them actually flying. So we're just jumping the gun here by saying federal government did what they are not supposed to do. If you take, for instance, uh, British Airways, Air France, when they do have an accident, you actually don't close the operations. It's not done. You, you, you segment what has happened. You, 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 you put aside the particular aircraft. And then you do very, very rigorous uh, uh, investigation before you now do the indicting. There are cases in aviation that take three years, some take four years. You do not close the operation of the airline. You segment, you segregate, and then you investigate. And that's what we are doing. And I want to say that for us in aviation, safety is priority, will continue to be priority, is not negotiable, is the way aviation works. It's safety, 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 safety. Say from what you've said now, by inference that government, it was a knee-jerk response to suspend the operational license in the first instance, and so government made a mistake. It's not a mistake. Government responded to, to the citizens' cry for justice, if you like. A government took a decision for the best interest of uh, of our citizens. Uh, we didn't do the wrong thing, we did the right thing. And we are also doing the right thing as we let them go back to work now. I'm saying it's not international practice, but we did it uh, with the best of, of responsibility.